So you loaded up Chivalry 2 for the first time and spent the majority of your time being decapitated, only to spawn back in and get beaten to death with your own severed head by someone who's played thousands of hours of Mordhau. Stick around because I have some simple and effective combat maneuvers for you. For move number one, we want to hamstring them with an ankle shot, and we're going to do this by using the crouch key, which is control on mouse and keyboard. And I use this move all the time, especially at very close range, and I find it really throws off my opponents. So what I'm going to do here is when I'm in a sword fight, back and forth, swing block, swing block, while I'm winding up my swing, I'm going to hit control and aim right down at their ankles. And this move does two things. One, it confuses the opponent because they lose sight of you. And secondly, with chivalry is block mechanics, you're supposed to aim your block at the tip of the swinging weapon. And what happens most of the time is that opponents just continue holding it up towards the sky while you are down low, chopping at their ankles for a free hit. And a special bonus of using this ankle strike is that sometimes the enemy strike will swing straight over your head and they will miss their shot if they tried to gamble. Second up, we have dealing with a low skill sword and board player that we call a turtle, someone who just likes to hold up their shield and block their strikes. We're generally not worried about that player because generally they use a shield because they're low skill. But what we are worried about is someone knocking us in the back of the head while we are trying to get past their shield stamina. So the best way to deal with a turtle is to embrace the turtle and force them to turtle because chivalry has given us ways of breaking up their blocks. So when you see a turtle shaking in their boots, I found the most effective way is to get them to put up that block. So what you're going to do is attack them with either a stab or a slash, but then you are going to morph that slash or stab into a kick, which will then break their block and you follow it with another either slash or a stab for a free hit. Now I have found this this morph from a, a strike into a kick to be very effective in any sort of combat with most any players, but you just have to be careful on players with pole arms or range because the kick can come up short, so make sure you are close enough to actually land the kick before you throw it. Third technique we have up is fainting, and I've seen a lot of questions from people on if fainting is effective because of hold to block, and the answer is yes it is. I fake people out all the time with faints, but just like in actual sports, you have to sell the faint. What a lot of players wind up doing is they immediately go from, say, thrust to slash, and what winds up happening is because the fake was so quick, the player didn't notice it or they didn't fall for it. So again, you want to sell the fake by waiting for the initial strike to be almost halfway through before switching it to either another stab or a slash. And I found this confuses a lot of players and they release their block to try to swing back and before their swing gets there, you catch them right in the dome. Method number four, while in 1v2, 1v3, 1v4 situations, your enemies should have the advantage because they have numbers, but with numbers, people tend to get stupider because they're all so busy fighting each other over landing that final blow to get their kill for their stats. That many times you can use this tried and true method that's been going around since the Mordhau days, which is you block the strike of the first person to attack you, and then you change your attack, not back at them, but at your other targets. Again, people will be so thirsty to land the last hit on you that they won't react to you switching up your angle and putting a stab right in their face. And this is how you get those nice clips on people where you bring down three, four, five people in a row because they got so stupid and so thirsty for a kill that they fell repeatedly for you blocking one strike and switching your attack to another enemy. Method number five on how to get more kills is to know when to throw your weapon. Not all cowards play archers. There are plenty of people in the melees who take a little bit of damage and then they want to head for the hills. When a player retreats, it can be dangerous to follow them because they might be running into a horde of their teammates, which now puts you in a, in a sticky situation where you have to fight a new wave of five or six people. And you have to make a decision on if it's worth going into that to clean off the coward who ran away. 
There are two big tells for when to throw your weapon at a retreating player. If a player dodges back and then starts to take his bandage, you'll see a little animation of him like looks like he's sewing his arm. This is a perfect opportunity while he's slow moving and low on health to throw your weapon. It's an easy shot and get a kill and it's worth doing because the, uh, the secondary weapons in this game are all pretty strong. The second opportunity to throw your weapon is when you see a player turn their back and tuck tail and run because now they cannot even see the animation of you winding up and it should be an easy shot as they just run straight and you hit them in the back of the head with your messer. So that brings us to the end of our video. Please let me know in the comments if you guys would like more chivalry tutorials and content. And if you're not already subscribed, become an angel by subscribing. I will see you guys in the next video. Champ out.